So now I, I've talked about uh, Sinclair Broadcasting and how they're a deeply right-wing company, um, and they've been buying up a lot of local uh, television stations. They actually are looking to own about 72% of the media market. They're actually trying to merge with Tribune Entertainment, um, which would give them unprecedented access into people's homes. Now, look, it's not I'm not against uh, Sinclair because they're right wing. You're allowed to hold your own opinion if uh, you know of, of whatever you want, right? Uh, you can have your own opinion. For example, uh, progressives uh, are you know we own a lot of uh, online media, right? Uh, the establishment, of course, has CNN, MSNBC, for example. The right has Fox News. They all have their different opinions, and that's 100% fine. That's part of our discourse. It's part of our rights uh, as Americans in the First Amendment to have our own uh, freedom of speech, our own opinions um, on television and online, right? Now, Sinclair, the problem with them is that they don't just have opinions. They have a habit of doing massive media consolidation uh, and then... Uh, you know, they buy up these local outlets, especially, which are more trusted among Americans. <clears throat> and then they slip in right wing talking points, propaganda into their broadcasts while calling it news. So, for example, uh, Sinclair forces local stations to run pro Trump news segments. Now, back in April, for example, uh, they hired Boris Epstein. Now, uh, Boris Epstein is a former uh, Trump campaign spokesperson and was a member of the White House press office as its chief political analyst. Now, Epstein, uh, who's still working at Sinclair, uh, he would do these 10-minute segments of just pure political commentary, political opinion, right? These are packaged into must-run segments. So, for example, any of the stations, whether it be a right-wing station or a left-wing station, whatever, or, or, or a station uh, with journalists that want to be nonpartisan. No, no, you have to run it. It doesn't matter. You've got to run this 10-minute pro-Trump, pro-Republican segment on your local news. Or you get in trouble. You get punished, right? Now, these 10-minute segments, of course, uh, align with the Trump administration's message. Whatever they want. And so they are very pro-conservative. They're very pro-Trump. Again, being pro-Trump and doing commentary isn't a problem. But when you package that into must-run segments that then, you know, do propaganda dis disguised as news, that's a big, big problem. So, look, and those of you who might be like, oh, come on, so what, right? They've got an opinion. Well, we'll think about it this way. Imagine during the Obama administration, CNN bought up a bunch of... Uh, you know, smaller local channels, and decided they wanted to run 10-minute segments of Rachel Maddow talking about how awesome President Obama is. And that was, again, must run. And they packaged that and they described that as news. Now, if you're a conservative, you're right if your hair is on fire, right? And you, oh, my God, I can't believe it. What is this? This is pure left-wing bullshit propaganda. And they shouldn't be able to pass it off as news, this opinion, these opinion pieces. And they shouldn't force these stations to run these segments. And if you make that argument, I would agree with you. So I agree, you should not be uh, doing these segments uh, and forcing them into your local newscast. So that's what they're doing, right? That's what this is. Now, unfortunately, that's, again, Sinclair has been caught doing that. And now they're also into a little bit of trouble for doing something similar. Uh, but this time, there's a different angle to this. Now, according to The Week, on Thursday, the FCC uh, fined Sinclair Broadcasting $13.4 million for failing to disclose that TV segments that looked like independent news coverage has, was actually paid programming from a cancer foundation. Now, this is the Huntsman Cancer Foundation. Now, Variety gives me more details. And they said the FCC had acted on an anonymous complaint that Sinclair had aired paid programming about the Huntsman Cancer, Cancer Center during its news programs, but did not tell viewers that Huntsman paid for the stories to air. So Huntsman, right, this place, pays for this advertising. They, they give Sinclair money. Here you go. Uh, run these ads that are actually disguised as news content. And you must run it because we paid for that airtime. And, uh, you know, Sinclair 
says, okay, yeah, I'll take your money. I'll run these ads. No problem, right? Well, we're in favor of this. We, we're getting paid. So we're going to do and we're going to push this down to all of our local stations as well that are trying to run more straight news broadcasts and not opinion pieces. And we're going to, you know, not tell them that it, it's actually we're going to not going to tell our viewers that this is that this was already bought and paid for, that this isn't an actual news investigative piece. This was created by this foundation. Now, the Cancer Foundation, by the way, uh, is uh, was founded by John Huntsman Sr. Now, he's a businessman that has been very active in Republican politics. Uh, and he's also the father of John Huntsman Jr., the current ambassador to Russia. So, John Huntsman is in the Trump administration. That's very interesting. Now, the FCC's Enforcement Bureau found that Sinclair and the Foundation entered into an agreement under which Sinclair produced and supplied programming to both Sinclair and non-Sinclair television stations. So, <clears throat> they would create this programming, uh, this so-called original news programming, send it out to their different affiliates and their different stations, uh, and basically make them play it. Now, the FCC says that the programming was broadcast more than 1,700 times, <clears throat> quote, either as stories resembling independently generated news coverage that aired during the local news, or as longer form stories aired as 30 minute television programs. Now, the agency said that this was the largest fine ever imposed for a violation of its sponsorship identification rules. So that's what it is. They're getting paid this money and they're not transparent about it. And again, they're, they're disguising this as actual news when it's not actually news, it's just an ad. It's to get you to, I don't know, go to this cancer foundation or donate to this cancer foundation or whatever. Um, that turns around and, of course, pays Sinclair and probably goes to other uh, lobbying efforts, maybe not related to cancer. I don't know. I don't know anything about the cancer center, so I'm not going to say anything um, that's going to get me in trouble, right? Other than what I know here, okay? So now forget, again, that this center is run by a registered Republican. Okay, that's fine, whatever. Uh, it's a cancer center. Maybe they do great work. But again, what they're having this, what they're doing is that they're paying for advertising this disguise as news. It's clear deception. So uh, this Sinclair Broadcasting Network is basically making a lot of these uh, local news outlets lie to their audience and say, no, no, this is news. This is an actual news segment. It's not an advertisement. What are you talking about? No, no, no. See, the problem is, again, again, when you're lying to your audience, the thing that I've learned doing this show is that trust is like the biggest thing in news, right? You, you got to have your audience trust you or else they're not going to come to you for news. Sinclair is, again, proving itself to not be trustworthy by doing actual propaganda. Now, even if you're a Republican, even if you agree with Trump, even if you agree with what you're doing, do you want the local news to be run by a company that does paid advertisements that pretend to be actual news coverage? No, I don't think anybody wants that. You want to talk about fake news? That is literal fake news because there's, it's a commercial. It disguised as news. So, and look, this is having the FCC find them. And admittedly, it's not a big fine because uh, it's a billion dollar company, right? Uh, and that's actually the biggest dissent that they had on the FCC board. I've had a lot of problems with the FCC. I didn't agree with their... Uh, Ability to do, um, you know, to, to allow these companies to do more mergers, acquisitions, and things like that. Um, and I definitely did not agree with their uh, net neutrality decision. But in this one, the, all the commissioners are unanimous. Find this company. Now, some of the uh, commissioners, the Democratic commissioners, actually were like, we should probably find them more. <clears throat> but at the very least, all the commissioners agreed that We've got, they obviously did something hugely, hugely wrong, and we're going to have to punish them somehow for it. So this is one decision that I can at least get behind on, a, on, a, on an FCC that, for at the moment, I disagree with greatly. So here's to having some principle, at least. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. 
And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.